this video, I'll walk through common line cutting. So the idea with common line cutting is if you've got parts that have long straight edges to save time and a bit of material, you can basically nest these very close together and use one cut to essentially separate two parts. So saving time and material. Uh, one word of caution for abrasive cutting, you have to be very careful. You want to make sure that the parts are nice and long so they're not going to tip up and also heavy enough that they're not going to float around and cause collisions. So be very careful if you're doing common line cutting with abrasive cutting. Uh, common line cutting works quite well with water only cutting. So we'll run through a couple of things here. The first time that somebody tries common line cutting they usually uh, get it wrong and then I get a phone call or email. What usually happens is they're used to doing regular parts without the common line cutting and they'll go to their contour command and put their leads on their parts as they would normally and then they go to nest as normal and they say oh, okay we'll use the common cut here nest shows in red areas that they can do common line cutting they hit stop they hit ok close uh, tool pass already on there i told it common line cutting those must be common line cuts so yeah we'll just continue on our merry way here set our zero point process parts to close continue uh sure and then by the way, if you don't want that warning ever, you can go into this gear and strategy. And there's this checkbox here, check park distance, but probably a good idea to keep that on anyways. So preview. And see here, it does the holes and then goes around four sides, holes, four sides. So that's usually when I get the call or email saying something's not right here. I thought I was just supposed to do one cut to separate those parts there. Why is it going around four sides? And that's because if you are going to do common line cutting, you don't want to add the outside uh, cut to any of the parts that you do want to common line cut. So let's go back and undo. So we can go ahead, we'll just delete those tool pass off of there. Just a couple. Try that again. There we go. Alright, so you can either add your internal tool pass with the contour command, or you can do them later in the common cut command. So we're just gonna not put any tool pass on these parts right now. And go into nest and auto. Select our sheets check our common cut line box down here. So down here, the gap, this is what it's going to put between the common line cut parts based on the orifice size that we've chosen. And then minimum length, uh, you might find that you want to avoid doing very short uh, common line cuts because it probably takes more time for it to do a short little one inch common cut than it would just to cut it normally. And if I close, if I go up to my machine settings and I choose a different orifice, Tenthile orifice, for example, and go back in to the nesting. So now it'll show me that if I do the comma line cutting, it's going to put a tenthile gap between the pieces. But we'll go back to our seventhile. And comma cut. And we'll put a minimum cut length of. I'll leave it zero for now just so we can see if it does something different. So here we see on that first layout there was a short edge that it was going to do. If I hit cancel and put minimum length at say six inches. Might get a slightly different layout. So you can let this go for a little bit. So this edge here must be slightly longer than six inches. You can let it go like that, or let's see what happens if we put it at eight, just for fun. And then these rings, which can't be common line cut, it's gonna use whatever gap is specified up here in the part distance, which right now is 60 thou, if I wanna make that gap more evident, we'll set that to quarter inch and 
So any of your any of your non-common line cut parts will have that gap there. And that looks good. We'll hit stop and OK and close. Alright, so now if we zoom in here, we can see that gap there. So that's that seventh thou gap that we told it to use for the common cutting. And go back to our cam tab, toolpath, and common. And there's a couple different ways of doing common cutting. You can do part-wise where it's going to go around. In this case, we'll go around four edges of the first part, three edges of the second part, three edges of this one, three edges of this one, two edges of this one, and so on. Uh, the other option, which is more frequently used is sheet wise where on parts like these it's going to go up down up down and then on the last one it'll basically keep the jet on and go around the perimeter of whatever parts so we'll focus on the uh, the sheet wise for right now so normally this use tool diameter box is checked and grayed out here is the tool diameter that we've currently got selected again if i cancel out for right now and i go back into here and change this back to 10 and toolpath common check that box again so there based on the orifice that we've selected you've got that value there so related to that is this little icon down here that's been added so you click on this it's going to find the closest gap that it sees between the parts in the nest so here it shows us that the shortest distance is seven thousandths of an inch. So if somebody else had nested this sheet and they had selected the seventh thou orifice and then I come in later that day or next day, whatever, to complete this and I have happened to select the tenth thou orifice, uh, this is going to fail because the parts are seven thousandths of an inch apart and I've told it that I'm using a tenth thou orifice and if I do try to put tool, uh, the uh, common cutting on here, It'll say, okay, part's too close. So it does end up putting a toolpath on here, but it's going to go around twice. So I want to avoid that. So we'll just do a control Z to undo that. So if you come in here and you click on that and you find out that these two numbers don't match up, two options, you can change your orifice or you can uncheck this box and type in the actual gap that's given there. But we're going to go ahead and just change to the correct orifice size. Toolpath common. All right, we got that, got that. Let's see, ignore hole. So for some reason you didn't want to cut any inside cuts, you could check that box there. Contour on separated. What this means is that for the common cutting, it's going to use these settings over here for the uh, any lead-ins so on these parts these inside cuts on these parts since they are common cut parts it's going to use these settings for the lead-in if you check this contour and separated then it's going to use whatever settings that we have up in our contour command for the lead-ins on these non-common line cut parts so if we actually cancel out for a moment go back to go to our contour command so in here, for example, we've got our internal lead set as being 60 thousandths of an inch and a yeah, user piercing type and similar type thing. Same thing for the external corner. We've got these settings. So if we go back in here, if we check this box, then it's going to use the lead settings from the contour command on the rings and then it'll use these settings on the common cut parts. If we just want to use these settings on everything, including the rings, you would uncheck that box. We're going to leave that checked so you can see that. Uh, minimum length, so if we wanted to, if we get to this point, we decide that uh, there was, a, so earlier we had this one that was going, going to be cut, or um, that was showing common cut because there was a, uh, six inches more or more than six inches there and you get to this point decide well actually I don't want a common line cut that then you can at this point adjust that minimum to uh, to something else so let's go back to this layout cam toolpath common again 
So it's showing us here in yellow that it will be doing a common line cut, but you get to this point and decide, eh, let's not bother doing common line cut there. And then you can adjust this length. And now it'll do two cuts there. Now you would want to probably manually move this part away from the other one a little bit so that it didn't cut into the other one. But we'll come back to that. And then you've got your length of lead-in that you want to use on your common cutting, type of lead-in that you want to use for your common cut parts. Cross ramping quality is uh, usually going to be used with abrasive cutting, where if you're cutting across an area that you already did a common line cut before, you you'll want to slow down a bit so that the stream doesn't jump the kerf width. For water only cutting, you can leave that at medium. And then you can also do trim to sheet. So if your tolerances allow it, you can basically position your parts or you can nest with no border on the sheet and put these pieces right up against the edge of the sheet. And then you won't have to cut this edge or that edge of those pieces. So for example, cancel again here. If I take this, I'll make a copy. So I can just grab these pieces, move endpoint to endpoint. While I'm at it, I'm just going to move this piece a little bit. So toolpath common. And if I choose trim to sheet, OK. So you see that it, there's no toolpath along those edges there. So if your tolerances allow it, you can save a little bit more time and material by doing that. Whereas if we do this one, common, I can leave this checked uh, because these pieces aren't up against the sheet. It'll still put a toolpath on here. So we got that there. And looking back again at that item about contour on separated, here it's used the uh, lead settings from the auto command. Whereas on those common line cut parts, it's used the setting from the common line command. So then you would do your order button, process, inside cuts and then come back and do the common cuts. Now this one I didn't move these two pieces apart. So there would be two cuts there if I want to avoid that. I'll just do a couple of control Z's here and move this like I did on the other one. on the other one is that for those long edges along the edge of the sheet it's not going to do those cuts.
And sometimes you may want to try to squeeze extra parts out of a sheet. And if your tolerances allow it, you can set your gap for the uh, common line cutting at zero and potentially squeeze extra parts out of your sheet. So for example, this part here, six inch square, I've got a piece of material, foam typically a little bit larger than nominal. I've got this as 49 by 98. Do our auto. And we'll do the common line cutting. So if I leave the gap at the seventh thou, we get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rows and not quite getting an eighth row in there because of that seventh thou gap between each row. By the time it gets to this last area up here, there's not enough room to fit the, uh, the last row of parts in there. So if you don't mind your parts being slightly undersized, you can override this and just put zero for the gap. And now we get eight rows. Stop, okay, close, toolpath common. And if we come here, check shortest distance zero. So we check here, part distance zero, click on okay, select those parts. And then it'll put a toolpath like that and the parts will be slightly undersized. Usually for water only cutting, it's not an issue. And this will also be a good one to show the part-wise version of common cutting. Toolpath back to common. So rather than doing sheet-wise, if we do part-wise, uh, an additional option on the part-wise is this use gap, um, wherein this would come in more handy probably for abrasive cutting, where if essentially you want to tab the parts into the sheet, you can check this box here and it'll leave a bit of a gap basically re-pierce and tab the, you know, the parts in so they stay together a little bit better. But for foam, we're not gonna worry about that. And click on OK. That's the part wise where it's going to go around two or three sides depending on how it puts that toolpath on there. And the other option in the common cut menu is lines where all it's going to do is basically draw CAD lines around our parts, uh, which you could then either export as a DXF file or use the quick command or manual command. So if you wanted to do things a little bit differently, you could do that and then go back and use manual command and do this toolpath however you wanted to. another video on our website about the um, manual command if you want to check out how this works but basically you can determine for yourself what you want the uh, toolpath to do whatever crazy pattern you might like if you have any questions on the common cutting let me know thanks